Since 1911, the Winter Garden Theater has brought glamour and distinction to Broadway, with stars like the five-time Tony Award-winning actress Angela Lansbury. My introduction to the great Winter Garden Theater was when I opened in a fabulous musical called Mame. Down to your well, Mame, thank goodness, was my introduction to what they call stardom. Just put your thumb up to your nose. Broadway in those days was absolutely magical. The audiences were so excited to be in New York on the Great White Way. In 1911, the Schubert brothers purchased William K. Vanderbilt's American Horse Exchange and hired architect William Albert Swayze to convert it into the Winter Garden. What's interesting about it being a horse exchange is that just as the, the building is going from serving the needs of horses to, to serving the needs of people, the whole city is being transformed from the horse to the car. The theater utilized the original classical facade with Palladian arches and columns. In 1923, it was redesigned by architect Herbert J. Krapp into the handsome, Adamesque style that it is today. It's a very, very wide auditorium. It's just like the audience is on a plate in front of you, a platter of faces who are responding to what you're doing. And uh, I've never found a, another theater that compared to it, actually. Beginning in the 1910s, the Winter Garden was home to The Passing Show, a lively series of musical reviews. To accommodate its growing popularity, the Schubert's added a special feature that became a trademark for the theater, a runway from the tip of the stage to the back of the orchestra. Jokesters at the time referred to it as the bridge of thighs because women would sort of walk along there or they would dance along there, what we call leg shows. You know, there was a lot of leg being shown. Through the decades, great stars have graced the Winter Garden stage. Al Jolson in Sinbad, Fanny Bryce in the Ziegfeld Follies, and Mary Martin in the timeless Peter Pan. Then, in 1957, West Side Story, starring Cheetah Rivera, brought together four giants of Broadway. Jerome Robbins, Leonard Bernstein, Stephen Sondheim, and Arthur Lawrence. And this theater's so rich. It's, it's, it looks rich. It, it's filled with amazing memories. That music, that dancing, that direction, that book, those lyrics, it doesn't happen every day. At the very end, when she's on her knees, and the body's carried out, and the two gangs come together. I can feel Jerome Robbins up on that stage now. In 1982, the Schubert organization agreed to modify the Winter Garden to accommodate Andrew Lloyd Webber's production, Cats, directed by Trevor Nunn. We had just finished decorating the Winter Garden. Shades of gold and white, it was magnificent. And Trevor Nunn said, we have to take the theater and we have to paint it black. What? But <laughs> we had to go along with it. And there were other changes that needed to be made. We had to cut a hole in the ceiling, in the roof of the building, to allow a hydraulic mechanism to descend down onto the stage so that an actress could step onto that and be lifted up into the heavens onto the outside of the Winter Garden Theater. Of course, we couldn't have Betty Buckley standing out there in the sun and in the rain and in the snow, so we had to build this hut on top of the Winter Garden roof. By the time we were done, this piece of scenery cost us $250,000. So it's a good thing Cats played at the Winter Garden for 18 years. With the success of Mamma Mia, the long-running musical that followed Cats, the Winter Garden has become one of the most commercially successful houses on Broadway and home to some of its most acclaimed stars. The theater makes you broaden your life. It's a great place. I'm a lucky girl. The theater is the thing that really fills my life in ways that I can't compare to anything else. I just love it.